Hello everyone. Uh, in this interview, we have Bavik Merchant, uh, who was in Perth for some time. The first time that I met him, uh, he was working in Microsoft over there. Now, recently, he moved to Microsoft headquarters in Redmond, and he's working with Power BI team, uh, dealing a lot with reporting services and some other like Power BI performance features. Hi, Bobby. Hey, Reza. Great to see you again, as Thank always. You. Thank you. Can you introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, sure. So, so as you said, I'm Bavik Merchant. Um, I'm a I'm an African Indian Australian. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm an Indian who was born in Zimbabwe, who moved to Australia for 13 years, and then then I'm now in the US. Um, so, my background, uh, I've got a, a you know a traditional uh, corporate BI background. I did a lot of data warehousing across the entire Microsoft stack. So analysis services, reporting services, integration services, performance point, SharePoint integration. Um, I've been a, a, a practice lead. I used to manage two practices for a partner before I joined Microsoft. Uh, I've been a formal trainer for many years across all technologies to do with you know SQL, Power BI, Power Pivot, um, all that kind of stuff. So you know I'm a true analytics guy. I love data. I love I love storytelling with data, um, and Power BI has always been my passion. So uh, I'm glad to get the opportunity to work with the team here and really help drive where the product goes. Um, and a lot of that stemmed from the work I was doing in Perth uh, with the Power BI user group. I was one of the user group coordinators. Um, and you know it was a great opportunity to actually see what people were doing with the product on a, on, on a monthly basis. Mm. So yeah, that's, that's me. Mm, that's great. Thank, thank you for your introduction. Uh, so, so talking about reporting services and Power BI, which are sessions that you are talking in Ignite. Uh, we have seen a lot of interesting things like photos, announcement about paginated reports in Power BI. So how does that work? Do Is it like SSRS reports uploaded into Power BI? That's exactly how it's going to work uh, for now. Um, so yep. the idea is we're not changing the RDL format in the foreseeable future. It's a yep. mature product. It's been around for 15 years plus. Um, you know, big user base and very broad deployments globally. You know, we've broadly used... And it just made sense to complete the story that we started with Power BI Report Server. So that's where we took Power BI reports and brought them on-prem. This is kind of the other way around. Now we're taking those paginated SSRS reports and taking them to the Power BI service. So the idea is you will be able to deploy this as an additional workload. Uh, at the moment, that will be inside your premium capacity. But in time, we're looking to bring that to the shared service also. So you don't need to have to buy premium to, to get that capability. And that's the idea. You'll be able to deploy the same reports uh, up into the service. Uh, but over time, there'll be additional capabilities that we never had before, like talking to Power BI data sets um, and you know, sharing and putting inside Power BI apps and that kind of stuff. So mm, that's, that's kind of like the, the high level. Um, yeah. That, that's quite interesting. So, th so these SSRs reports, do they need to have a specific features or any, any SSRs reports you can just upload it? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question. So um, when the public preview is announced in the near future, um, we will support the vast majority of report features. So by report features, you know, tablexes, the various chart types, little spark lines, et cetera, et cetera, you know, expressions, conditional formatting. That's most of that is already working. There's just a couple of features that are still being finalized, and and that might even get finished. I think it probably will be finished by the time they release. So that kind of stuff can be expected. What won't be in the initial release is things like shared data sets, mm. uh, shared data sources, uh, things like your report parts, uh, and some of the more administrative and and, and uh, I guess organizational features. So what I mean by that is things like uh, your you know scheduled reports, data-driven subscriptions, uh, things like snapshots and caches. Mm -hmm. We have those in the radar, but uh, we feel you know let's get the reports working in there first, and then let's figure out how we uh, I think deploy these kind of features into Power BI in a way that doesn't conflict with how Power BI does things. So an example would be, you know, SQL Server does uh, data-driven subscriptions, right? And, and you can get emails, uh, you can get attached reports, you can dump it into file shares and stuff. That's a very, very commonly used feature. Um, now, that doesn't exist exactly the same way in Power BI, but there is this notion of, you know, I, I can do a subscription, I can get an alert. 
So we're figuring out how do we blend these capabilities together um, in a way that doesn't sacrifice any functionality and adds value on both sides. And I see in some cases, you know, there's great things that SSRS do, which Power BI should be able to borrow the idea from and actually actually mimic in some ways. So, so that's the idea there, you know. A, a hmm. lot of the stuff is just going to be easy to move across, but some of it needs to be thought out a little bit more so that it is in harmony with Power BI. And, and that, you know, the, the goal has always been parity with SSRS as much as possible, um, but we don't want to just bolt on this SSRS capability in Power BI, call it paginated, but leave our customers to deal with, you know, a different management experience, a different sharing experience, a different data experience. We want to harmonize that over time so that it really feels truly part of Power BI. Correct. It, it's good that you point out about these like subscription because that is one of my questions as well. So uh, in uh, in uh, on-premises, we have Power BI report server, which gives us building reports on-prem. And it's mm -hmm. like kind of an instance of reporting services, which we can host Power BI reports in it. But mm -hmm. we don't have yet subscription feature on Power BI reports of it. So is it something that is in the pipeline somewhere in the future? For the PBIRS box product specifically, yes. yeah, um, I'm I'm gonna guess at the plan here, so don't take my word for it. But but yep. in my mind, what what should work is as we get those features harmonized in the cloud, um, they will then come down to the box product if they make sense. The same way we've been doing with the with the other Power BI Correct, stuff yes. um, that, that moves it to the cloud. Uh, sorry, so to, usually to comes in cloud first, and then after a few months, it will come in report server. Yeah, on that's prem right as well. Okay, yep. that, that sounds good. Um, uh, talking about uh, like report server on prem and uh, the report server it's uh, uh, sorry the reporting services itself. Uh, lots of people think that okay, we have SSRS reporting services now. We have Power BI, which is incorporating lots of features of reporting. Is it going to replace SSRS? That is one of the big questions people ask. That is a big question, um, and that's something we are discussing quite seriously because you know, as we plan our strategy over the next twelve to twenty-four months, we we need to figure that out. Um, I think the comfort that that our users and our customers should should get is from the statement that hey. SSRS is not going away. Um, what we did with Power BI Report Server is to really try to detach from the SQL ecosystem somewhat so that you know we can have a separate installer, a separate experience there, and that we can bring those features to the on-prem product a lot sooner. Um, because you know, people once we started enabling that capability to, to have Power BI reports on-prem, um, that release cadence changes. So SSRS is not going away for the foreseeable future. Um, you will see it in there. It will just be updated at the same frequency that that you know SQL is updated. Right. Yeah. Correct. And and right now, if we want to like have paginated reports, even with this new feature, we have to still have SSRS reports to have the paginated reports because Power BI reports are good interactive reports, but not for pagination or like creating printing structure, page header, page footer. So combination of those two works best. Okay, that, that's yep. great to know. Um, any upcoming features in these, apart from that uh, paginated reports in Power BI service in the report server area or SSRS combination with Power BI that you see and you can explain actually? <laughs> um, so, you know, I think I'd, maybe I want to highlight the stuff that just came out recently because the yep. August release for PBI RS was quite quite significant. Yep. Um, you know, there, 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 there's a lot of things that people were asking for. You know, like like stuff around connectivity and so on that that came out. So, so you know, I'd I'd, I'd, I'd guide people to that one. Um, over the next, I guess, three months or four months when the next release comes out, it, you know, it should be around the November November December timeframe. Um, I probably want to. I wish I could call Chris and ask him now because I know he's got part of the plan. And unfortunately, since I've started working on another workload, I haven't been part of the planning process much. Yep. So I wish I could answer what was on the horizon, um, but I, I kind of don't have that at my fingertips right now. Right. Okay. Yeah. That that makes sense, of course. And you mentioned that you are now uh, focusing more on like performance tuning of Power BI things as well. Can mm -hmm. you explain a little bit on that? Have you started that piece of work yet, or? Yes, so I guess work has started around around planning. Um, okay. So we know at a high level what areas we want to focus on. So I think there's three of those. The first one would be just making Power BI even faster. Uh, so we're focusing first of all on the report loading experience. So when you get into the service, either through navigating via a workspace or an app, um, or even hitting a link somewhere and then going straight into Power BI, 
no matter how you get there, we want that experience to be to be as fast as possible. And the team have already identified many areas where we can we can do things even better than we have. Um, the second area is, you know, we see a lot of uh, customers struggling with understanding why things are behaving the way they are. So, you know, our data shows us that many, many reports, the vast majority of reports actually are, are extremely quick. Um, you know, I can't share numbers, but we've got, we've got great numbers. Mm. But we still see some reports that, you know, take a lot longer than they should be taking. Uh, it's difficult for a customer to work out why that is if they're not experienced enough. And, you know, there are many, many different, different, different aspects here. So what we're looking at is what kind of metrics can we give a report or a content owner to actually make those decisions easier. So can we give you more granularity to, for you to understand, well, you know, is it, is it, is it the data sourcing that's taking a long time? Uh, you know, is it, is it my queries? Is it my visuals? Uh, is it certain types of users? You know, is it a, a particular location? Um, so what we're looking at is what can we give you to actually make that visibility of your performance you know, right there, and mm -hmm. then give you further granularity so you can then you know, actually pinpoint where you need to actually make changes. So that's kind of you know the the reactive way you know after you've deployed, and I think that that's a good starting point as the first priority because uh, most customers right now have already deployed lots of content. Mm -hmm. So for you to get insights on that content that's already there, it would be a, would be a great step. But then the second piece we're working on in parallel is well, what about the authoring experience? Can we be more proactive about you know providing information that allows you to make better design choices? So by design choices, we mean, you know, if I, would, if I were to look at a high level, everything from how I do my, my, my power query and my M to my data model design, you know, and there's lots of best practices out there, um, you know, things like, you know, choosing the right columns, your cardinality, you know, relationships and directions, and there's lots and lots and lots of different advice. So, you know, it's easy to get into Power BI, uh, but sometimes when you get complex models, uh, it's easy to get into trouble with performance. So what we want to do is say, look, can we help you out in all those different areas, even then moving on to the DAX expressions and then even potentially moving on to the visual side. So from that whole end to it experience of getting data to visualizing data, what metrics and, and, and advice can we give you inside the tool potentially to make those decisions easier, uh, but also link you to the relevant material. So whether that's documentation or white papers or, you know, our TechNet blogs or whatever it happens to be, um, can we just point you to that information and make it easier for you to, to capture it? Because one of the challenges might be, you know, you're kind of new, um, you don't even know where to start. Uh, and you know, if you search online, um, you will find lots and lots of different things. Uh, some articles are newer, some are older. You might get confused. So I think if we can just point you to the right place to get further information, that would also be a good step. And I think it would help help customers um, just learn the product better. That That's really good. That's really good that um, Microsoft is investing on this part to bring the performance as an important part. Because uh, as you mentioned, right now we have lots of Power BI models coming all around. Uh, some of them are really small and fast, but those that are working like on a complex uh, let's say situations they need to have like some performance uh, tuning and it is good to have this like uh, covered by Microsoft as well thinking about how they can help with the performance tuning of model mm, that's fantastic uh, do you have any last word for our audience um, I guess we want to you know, going back to the to the RDL and reporting services stuff, um, the message I, I think I want to close with is we are investing very significantly. Yeah. There is a large team of dedicated people working on this RS workload, um, and you know you will see more and more stuff coming out. Uh, so I think I got asked the question a few times at the conference already. Hey, is is RS dead? The answer is a definite no. Um, we are not deinvesting in RS. In fact, uh, the team has been trying really hard now to you know keep the cadence. Uh, after we had SSRS 2016 with all those massive, you know, the, the whole portal was upgraded, we had extra functionality after a long time. We want to keep doing that stuff where it makes sense. Uh, and, you know, we've been collecting feedback at the conference over the last few days from our customers uh, to really say, look, we are, we are still building on this stuff and, you know, give us your feedback so we can con continue, to, continue to innovate. Awesome. That's a very clear message. Thank you. And thank you for your time. Um, hopefully we'll do this interview next time in person. I would love to. I hope to see you. Uh, and thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to represent the group. Thank you. Great. Bye. Thanks, Reza. OK.